Hello ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to be doing another historical battle in Medieval 2 Total War. We're going to be doing the Battle of Hastings. So let's see what troops we're given. We're given a lot of cavalry, um, tons of spearmen and a few archer militia. Um, against, oh no, not Huskarls, but uh, and Thanes and some peasants. So it's basically a very large melee battle. Um, we seem to have the cavalry and the archer advantage, so let's see if we can use them to our advantage. Uh, yeah. October the 14th, 1066, Caldbeck Hill, north of Hastings in England. This land is ruled by King Harold Godwinson, the latest in a line of Anglo-Saxon kings. But Duke William of Normandy has a claim to the throne too. Years ago, Harold is said to have sworn to help the Duke to the throne of England, but he has failed to honor his oath, and now he rules as king. But the throne on which Harold sits is not a comfortable one, and Duke William's invasion is fortunately timed. Even now, Harold marches south from battle at Stamford Bridge near York, having crushed another invasion led by Harold Hardrada of Norway. Duke William was able to land unopposed, but now his scouts report that Harold's army is in sight and has formed a shield wall on a ridge crossing the Normans' road. The position is a strong one, at the top of a gentle slope flanked by marshy ground, and the enemy appear happy to let the Normans come to them. The Duke has come well prepared for battle, and has many war-hardened infantry and horsemen. But if his men cannot overcome the enemy shield wall, they will have little choice but to negotiate terms or starve. Duke William of Normandy is no stranger to war, though. He knows that if there is no way around or through Harold's shield wall, he will have to find a way to pick it apart. The Anglo-Saxons are known for their fearlessness in battle, but perhaps William can use this to lure them from their position so that his horsemen can finish them off. The two forces are evenly balanced, but there are only two paths from this place for Duke William, to the grave or through the shield wall and onwards to the throne of England. So basically, never retreat, never surrender kind of deal. That's all right. Make sure that we win. Killing them will disrupt our enemy's command structure. Launch an assault against them and cut them down. Calm down, my friend. I think we'll weaken them first. Uh, seems like uh, the Huskarls are their strongest unit, um, especially on the flanks, and. Um, especially these Earl's Huskarls, which uh, contain Harold Godwinson's brothers. It's quite uh, an interesting story, actually, why the Battle of Hastings basically happened. Um, if you look at it in history, uh, Edward the Confessor, the King of England, before Harold Godwinson, supposedly said to Harold on his deathbed that um, he was the rightful Attack ruler. The Huskarls on the Saxon flanks! And basically, um, Harold Hardrada from Norway, and right there we go. There's the, the Huskars targeted, and Duke William basically turned around and said, uh, "We don't believe you." So Harold Godwinson ended up in a desperate fight, um, basically against the north and south, um, with Norway attacking from the north or Scandinavia, I suppose, and. France in the form of Duke William attacking from the south. It is interesting and in a way it has shaped uh, English history. So if you feel like has been slain. Without him to control them, the troops on the Saxon right should be easier to lure from that cursed shield wall. Attack them, then fake a retreat. Right, okay. But anyway, if, um if you you know if you're into history like me, you should definitely look up that story. It's quite interesting. And um, it's ba it basically shaped England's history in a way, if you think about it. It meant that it could be affected by the French culture. 
Um, so, looking at this right now, the enemy, or Harold, obviously has a better uh, terrain advantage. Our advantages are cavalry, which hopefully we can use to try and get behind the enemy. Unfortunately, both sides are cut off by a... well, it, it's a valley, basically. Um, so what I'm trying to do is just weaken these sides as best as I can. Attack the Saxon right, then retreat to draw them out. Yes, I understand. Um, well, might as well pull our archers back. Uh, because we have killed one of the brothers, and we'll just put them in a loose formation. Uh, I just find it it's easier to deal with when moving archers around. So let's just do that. Let's just have a preliminary charge. I am, not, I don't think I'm, uh, you know, going to break through their lines with one group of cavalry. It's basically just to make a hole or make the enemy attackers. Okay, so we've killed quite a lot of Huskals there. That was a good charge from that side. And hopefully on this side we did about the same. Yes, we did. We got a, um, about half of the unit gone. So as you can see, the secondary line is coming. <laughs> so what, what I'm going to do is first of all move my men slightly back. So we have a slight terrain advantage, and I really do mean slight. Um, archers behind to help out uh, the, our spearmen. Oh, that's that's quite annoying. Unfortunately, they didn't decide. They felt like pulling back, um, but that's fine. Uh, cavalry isn't very good against spearmen anyway. So let's just pull pull the horsemen back because I want to engage these men with my spearmen. Uh, my armored sergeants, they have. Uh, you know, one bronze rank and some defense. So hopefully they can either soak up a charge or... Ah, the male knights came back, right, okay. Let's put you to this side. And let's give you a good toot on your horn. Uh, why... Why not? Right, so... There's a lot of spearmen coming, which is fine. Um, it seems like they're very bunched up. So we can just surround them. Since they have no archer support, um, there's no worry of doing this and surrounding them from all sides except one. And it looks like we braced pretty well. So let's just do this. You can charge into them. You can charge into them. And you want to try and surround them from all sides except one because if you um, if you don't do that then they will fight to the death instead of rout like these peasants are. Um, I'm going to save these three troops uh, just so I have three units which aren't uh, not damaged at all. And it looks like a lot of their spearmen are already fleeing. Um, which is always good. And the archers are tearing them apart. I wish the, um, well not the narrator, but my battle advisor would be a little bit more, you know, just happy with our position. I think we're doing alright. Um, I might be completely wrong, but it seems we've routed some of their units, and we are slowly surrounding these big blocks, basically. And there goes more routing units. So let's finish off these spearmen here. And that only gives us one... Uh, one line of men and there's the um, I've done another charge just to see how um, if I can oh I can draw them out and here here we go so um, these battles are nearly completed unfortunately